Chris, can you change the display settings? We'll get started in one second, everybody. Okay, we'll just get started. That's okay, Chris. We only have two slides, that's fine. Uh, so welcome everyone to our Delaware Student Success um, session today with Delaware Technical Community College. We're super excited to have um, some of their admissions um, representatives with us, as well as several students so that you'll be able to hear what their experience is um, going to Delaware Tech. So we're really thrilled to have them. Um, I want, my name is Karen Keegan and I am from the Department of Education. I also want to acknowledge um, Chris Kelly, who is running this presentation. Um, we partner with the University of Delaware's Institute for Public Administration on many initiatives. So they are our partners in running these sessions for our Delaware uh, students and families. So um, I just wanna call out that we are holding these sessions with every Delaware college and university um, and hearing from admissions um, personnel as well as students from each of our colleges. So we've done a few of them already. Um, of course, today is Delaware Tech. Um, next week will be Delaware College of Art and Design and then the University of Delaware. We've already heard from Goldie Beacom and Delaware State University and Wilmington University. So know that these webinars are being recorded um, and will be posted on our DelawareStudentSuccess.org website. So you can go back and watch them. So for sure, if you learned some interesting things today and you wanna share this with your friends, um, you can tell them to go ahead and watch the recording. It'll be up sometime next week. One other thing I wanted to call your attention to um, is we have a texting program from the Higher Education Office at the Department of Education. So students and parents, caregivers are welcome to sign up to receive. Um, we send about two texts per week with um, you know, things to consider for your next steps after high school, things you can be doing now to be most prepared with whatever it is you're thinking about doing. Um, when you sign up and you text the word success to 302-492-2092, and we, for students, we will ask your first name, your last name, your school, and your year of graduation. And that way, if you're in ninth or 10th grade, we'll send you information that's more appropriate for your grade. And if you're a senior, we'll talk more about completing the FAFSA or other post-secondary options. Um, so it's a very easy to opt in and you can stop at any time. But the really cool thing about the texting program is that if you have questions or want to know more about something, you can text us back and we will answer you pretty quickly. So consider it a way to get more information um, and to get your specific questions answered so you can move forward with some planning on your next steps. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Delaware Tech team, um, to Kristen Kratz and she will take it from here. So thank you everyone for being with us. And I will say, if you have questions for the team, please put them in the chat and they will be monitoring the chat and answering the questions along the way. Okay, thank you for connecting with Delaware Tech tonight. My name is Kristen Kress and I'm an academic counselor at our Dover campus location. I'm joined tonight by my counterpart, Kate Matthews, who works at our Wilmington campus, and she's going to be assisting with technology and again, gathering any questions for our panelists in the chat. Before we go ahead and get started with our student panel introductions and questions, I'm going to go ahead and give you just a quick overview of Delaware Tech. As the only community college in the state of Delaware, we strive to provide programs that meet the needs of our community while putting students at the center of everything we do. We have four campus locations throughout the state. In Newcastle County, we have our Stanton and Wilmington campus. In Kent County, we have our Dover campus. And in Sussex County, we have our Georgetown campus. And it's important to recognize that while we have over 120 different majors, not every major is offered at every campus location. With that being said, students can get started and take general education classes at any campus location. 
We are the most affordable college in the state of Delaware, and our full-time tuition for in-state residents is capped at about $2,287.50 per semester. Many of our students graduate without any debt. And as I mentioned, we have over 120 different degree programs that are centered around the clusters you see on the screen. And the best place to determine which um, major is offered at which campus location is on our website. So if you go right to our website, you can see a complete list. And next to each major, you'll see a code either Dover, Georgetown, Stanton, or Wilmington. So you'll know which um, majors are offered at each campus location. So some of our majors are really designed to get you um, the, your education and get you right out and in, into it employed in your field, while other majors are designed to transfer to one of our partner institutions. So on the screen, you can see some of our partner institutions that we have um, agreements with. And again, if you go to our website, you can see a complete list of which um, majors connect with which partner institution and the curriculum is all mapped out for you. You can see the exact classes you're going to take at Delaware Tech and the exact classes you would take at the partner institution. So these are found on our website under connected degrees. And we do recommend that all students complete the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And we do have an April 1st priority deadline that we recommend students submit their FAFSA by. And that basically guarantees if students meet that April 1st deadline and we have a May 1st supporting document deadline, that basically guarantees that the funding, your financial aid will be in your account prior to the start of classes. So those are our recommended deadlines, April 1st to submit the FAFSA and May 1st for follow-up documentation. And all graduates of Delaware high schools who complete an application at Delaware Tech and complete the FAFSA are automatically reviewed for the State of Delaware Seed Scholarship. The Seed Scholarship provides free tuition for up to three years for students that have a 2.5 or 80% cumulative GPA Students can't have any felony convictions. And as it stands right now, the legislation says they cannot take a gap year. Um, so if you graduate from Cesar Rodney High School, for example, in June, you need to be enrolled with us in August. And the Seed Scholarship, again, does cover three full academic years. And students do need to be full-time students for their first semester at Delaware Tech, which is 12 credit hours in that first semester. After that, to maintain the scholarship, it's a 2.5 GPA and 24 credits within the year. Okay, so let's recap a little bit. The first step to applying is to go to our website and complete the application. And our application is free. It takes about 15 minutes to complete. And we are an open admission college, which means that we do not look at grade point averages or test scores at the point of admission. So we welcome all students at Delaware Tech. The second step is to go ahead and submit your FAFSA at studentaid.gov. And again, we recommend doing that by April 1st. The third step is to check your MyDTCC portal, which you'll gain access to after you've applied. For any additional documents that we may need to complete your financial aid process, and those we recommend turning in by May 1st. Step number four is demonstrating college readiness. And I wanna stress again that at the point you're doing this, you've already been accepted to the college but you have the option of submitting a high school transcript showing a 3.0 GPA, submitting SAT scores, and there's a couple other things you can do to show college readiness. And all that does is it exempts you from an English and a math support class. So all students at Delaware Tech start in college level classes, but if you would like to be exempt from a math and English support class, you have the option of submitting that 3.0 GPA, SAT scores, or taking our placement test. And then the last thing I want to point out is that we do start our course registration very early. So seniors that are planning to attend um, Delaware Tech next fall in April, if you make an appointment um, with us on campus, you can walk in. We have a virtual support center as well. In April, we do start course registration. So if you meet with a counselor, we'll sit down, map out your curriculum, make sure you have all your questions answered, and go ahead and select your classes. So, but before you graduate, you can have your class schedule already locked in and be all ready to enroll with us and start classes in the fall. Okay. 
And if you'd like additional information about our admission process, or our programs, we do have two virtual open houses coming up. One is on October 12th and one is on October 13th. And if you check our website, you can find additional information about which programs will be represented each night. And if you have any specific questions, either for myself, Kate, or our counterparts, Rachel and Melody, who are at our Georgetown and Stampus, Stanton campus locations, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and go into our chat and our student panel. All right, panelists. So let's just start off, um, if you could just give a quick introduction and tell us a little bit about your college search process and why you chose Delaware Tech. Andrew, do you wanna start for us? I can. Um, so from experience, you know you live and learn. Um, by the way, I'm Andrew Chatterton and um, I'm currently in the L L elementary education program at the Georgetown campus. Um, so I went backwards and did everything wrong. I started out at Salisbury University and um, I realized I couldn't afford that um, after the first year. So then I transferred and went to the Georgetown campus of Dell Tech and we're ended up being a lot cheaper and a lot more in my budget range. And, but I continue education still um, there. So I'm currently about to finish up at Dell Tech and then doing a uh, parallel program with Wilmington University where I will finish my bachelor's degree and get my bachelor's degree in education. Thank you, Andrew. Alexis, would you like to go next? I'm Alexis Holston. Um, I'm currently at the Dover campus. I graduated from Caesar, um, Caesar Rodney, and I'm currently taking classes under the human um, services. And things that really stuck out to me about going to Delaware Tech was definitely, um, as Kristen had said, about the um, seed and how easy the application was and being admit um, the admissions and everything. And I'm definitely like a small town person. Um, and I definitely enjoyed the small class sizes. I haven't been on campus for any classes, um, but definitely online. And um, you can be really personable with the advisors and you know your teachers and everything, just because it's such a small um, class size and the connected degrees as well. And there's a lot of hands-on learning with the different labs and different things that you can come onto campus for as well. Um, a lot to be offered. Thank you, Alexis. Lily? Hi everyone, my name is Lily Wiley. I'm an elementary education also um, major and I chose Delaware Tech because um, like Alexis said, also because of the C program and because of how affordable it is. Um, and also because of the small class sizes. I feel like I have actually been on campus this semester for the first time, um, which was really exciting. But um, because of those small class sizes, you can really um, connect one-on-one -on -one with the other people in your class and you can get more help from your um, professors because you know, there's not so many people that they have to attend to. So that's really why I gravitated towards Delaware Tech. Thank you. And I should have mentioned when I was talking about our application in the SEED scholarship that we do recommend that students apply into a degree program in order to be eligible for the SEED scholarship and financial aid. If you recall, did the three of you already know your major? Was what you put on the application what you ended up studying and are currently studying at Dell Tech? Or did any of you um, switch your majors along the way? Anybody who would like to answer this? Um, yes, mine maintained. Mine just got tweaked a little bit from the higher education to elementary education. So I did choose a uh, career pathway for that. Thank you. Mine was kind of the same way. I originally wanted to do secondary education. And then from taking my classes, I realized that I really loved elementary education and just working with the younger kids. Um, and I knew ever since I was little that I wanted to be a teacher. So my major hasn't changed at all. But I do know plenty of people who have changed their majors and it's not a hard process at all. Yeah, I actually spent my whole life wanting to be a teacher. And then um, my last year in high school, I realized I kind of wanted to do more um, with the psych psychological part of the school and everything, um, just more attention to like, like each individual um, student. And so I switched coming in, but I have stayed the same the whole time. Thank you. Can you share a little bit about how you balance everything? We know community college students are usually balancing multiple priorities. Can you just tell us about some of the things that you balance in addition to school? Whoever would like to go. <laughs> um, so with uh, class, um, you know, 
at, as far as the teachers go, they give us a pretty good, uh, um, like outline of the week, I, I would say, called an outline. And um, so, you know, it's expected by the end of the week of what you're going to do the following week. Um, so the, that part of the aspect is pretty well kind of set in stone. And then um, you manage your schedule around that, I would say. Um, after working in the summertime, I did like 90 hours a week. Um, I, it was a business, so it was a, it's a seasonal, so we call it like a 100-day business. So 90 hours a week is, is a lot, and then now we're in sc- uh, school time, so that's a little less, but, but you, you can make it work. It's definitely achievable, you know? So as long as you find a little bit of time to manage your time, then you'll really be fine and okay with it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, in addition to taking classes a full course load, I also work full time at the Milford School District. Um, and finding that balance is really, really important. My main thing is just realizing that I can't do everything at once and that I have to delegate something. So definitely learning how to say no. You know, obviously you can't say no to your professors when you have assignments, but learning how to say no to like extracurriculars and just some things that you just might not have time for um, is really important. And I'd also say planning. Look at everything ahead of time have a schedule, have everything planned out, and you should be pretty okay. I'm definitely with Lily and um, definitely looking at the planner ahead of time, planning, I don't want to say like weeks out, but at least like the um, following week to have everything, looking at the calendar and what you have going on that week, and then, you know, deciding, okay, let's do this day. Um, And I've actually been taking, I did dual enrollment through CR2, Um, And I was also working at Pfeiffer Orchards and different things like that um, through the seasonal things. And then um, I recently got a job at the um, college's child development center and um, it's part time there. And so it definitely works to be on campus in case I ever need to, you know, go talk to a professor or anything. And, um, And definitely figuring out what works best for you is definitely important. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. And I see Riley has joined us from lacrosse practice. Riley, would you mind telling us just a little bit about how you balance athletics and a little bit more? We actually had a question about lacrosse um, on the pre-survey, just a little bit about the lacrosse program. Sure thing. Um, Hello, my name is Riley Sapp. Um, I'm a CTO major, the civil transfer option. uh, And I play men's lacrosse. Um, Excuse me. Uh, I... Uh, got a first team academic all American, um, the award, I guess, for uh, my GPA. Um, I work full time. Uh, I have a couple jobs that are seasonal and also work at Lowe's and Camden. Um, I'm, is there like what, what was the question on the cross? So it's just a general question, just a little bit more about the program, maybe about um, practices, how to get in touch with the coaches. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so our practices uh, right now, we have fall ball uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, we're going up to um, New York actually next weekend to, to play in a couple or in a little tournament of all the JUCO colleges. Uh, if you want to get in touch with the coaches, we have um, a website online, or I can give you the numbers right now. Uh, the two coaches we have are Frank Cook and Sean Tischler. Um, and you can find that information on our, on our webpage. Uh, we are an up and coming team. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love for you guys if you want to play, if, if not all good. Thank you, Riley. And now can you tell us just a little bit about some of the resources that might have been helpful to you at Delaware Tech so far? Good thing. Um, my first semester I was, uh, struggling out of high school to, um, because all the classes were online, I didn't have many teachers that actually communicated through Zoom. So I was learning like through the learning modules and all that good stuff. So I reached out to the the math center and they helped me out almost immediately. That was fantastic. I asked them a question and they responded to me and actually like helped me out in little videos and or drew out the problem to uh, help me find a solution. Um, I, I myself, I haven't really needed anything other than that, but I know there's lots of other like centers, like the writing center, the science center and like English departments and all that. Thank you. 
and also reach different. out to your guidance counselors. Um, they're very helpful. Are you sorry? No, thank you, Riley. Appreciate it. Andrew, Lily, or Alexis, have you um, used any other support services other than the ones Riley mentioned that you found helpful? Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend um, reaching out. Sorry, Andrew. I definitely recommend reaching out to your advisors and even your teachers if you need some clarification about what's going on in your classes, or if you need help figuring out what classes you should take, your advisors will be there to help you and figure out what classes you need to take and what's required for your graduation. Um, also, I loved my first year seminar when I was coming in. It really helped me figure out how to navigate the um, website and how what expectations were going to be in most classes. So using those things is really important. Andrew, Alexis, do you have anything else to add to that one? Yeah, I was going to add, um, so got, uh, like my, my academic advisor, amazing guy, uh, Dr. Keim, wonderful, wonderful guy. I don't have enough to say about him. Um, but besides that, um, I had like problems, like when classes were truly all online and I kept resetting my password and it didn't work. And the tech support was just phenomenal. I don't know what they did, but they had magical hands and fixed all my problems. So that was that was actually amazing. Thank you. Alexis, anything else you want to add on that one? Definitely with Andrew and the tech support has been amazing. I've had so many questions and definitely the password. Um, I don't know why, but that's just it was definitely a struggle. Um, but I definitely like Lily had said about the first year seminar, you really want to um, do that and take it seriously because I know a lot of incoming students are like, you know, they don't really need it, but truly it does help. Um, the virtual support center, I've had to join for a couple of different things, especially when it comes to um, moving around different classes and schedules and everything. And then the new story, new student orientation, that helped a lot too. Um, and just better understanding, you know, your ex what your expectations should be going in and um, different ways of, you know, working around, like we said, all of your schedules going on. Thank you. Is there anything that you wish you knew about college before you started at Delaware Tech? Anything, any advice you might give a rising senior who is getting ready to go through this process? Um, for me, I would say the biggest thing is go start off as cheap as possible in case, uh, especially if you don't know if college is for you. So don't go start out like I did at an out-of-state university. That was kind of like a big no-no for me, but, you know, start at a local community college, um, get an idea of if you like it, even if you like it or not. Um, I know college is for everyone, but um, give one of our community colleges a try because it's, it's a great experience and it'll either set you up to go and proceed on college or you'll find your way and uh, achieve something else. What I'm, um, something that I wish I knew was that I wish I would have known that there were gonna be so many people in my classes who were much older than me. Um, I originally thought I was gonna be in a class with a lot of people who were my peers um, and like the same age as me or just coming out of high school. Um, but at a community college, that's not always you know, the case. And it's really, really nice to get to talk to people who are older than you, even if they're not like, like that much older than you. It's really nice to hear about their experiences and their different like um, points of view on things. Yeah, like Lily said, it's definitely interesting because the older people usually have, you know, more in the discussions online, more to say, you know, based on their um, career, what they've done so far and their experiences and everything. Um, and another thing would be um, definitely to, so I started at CR with a dual enrollment and honestly, do, without the dual enrollment um, and that like experience, I don't think I would have been as successful as I was in my first semester. Um, coming in just because dual enrollment it kind of sets you up for like the expectations but it's not actual like it's not in the college so that, you know when you come into the college it could be intimidating and stuff um, but when you do it through the high school you know you see the amount of workload that you have but it's from the high school like environment so that helped me a lot. Riley did you have any advice for other prospective students? Uh, sure um I liked uh, coming into, I, so I took a summer class going into my uh, senior year of high school, uh, intro to computers. And to my surprise, I was just about the only other person in there that spoke uh, English. So when the teacher was done teaching, 
I got to go around the room and, and help out everyone, whether they were older than me, younger than me. But it was just neat to see like that and how like different we are from each other, but we're all like going towards the same thing. And I, I, I just like how we're all like one, really. I, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, I, I like that. I like being able to communicate with people and uh, help that out. Thank you. Okay. And we're going to get to some of the questions in the chat here in a minute, but we're still going down our list of other questions. Can you um, just give us a little bit about what your plans are for after graduation? So after I graduate, I plan on transferring to Wilmington University to finish my bachelor's degree. And then I want to go straight into teaching. I'd love to teach either in the Milford School District or in the Cape School District. Um, and I'd wanna teach third, fourth, or fifth grade. I don't really have a preference there, just some of the older grades. So that's really what I plan on doing after I graduate. Andrew? Yeah, yep. Um, so um, after this semester, um, I'll be transferring to Wilmington University to finish out my degree um, in education. And then uh, I will hopefully get a job around somewhere in this area um, teaching as well. Um, I know in, in past semesters, but pre-COVID, we had a lot of, they're, they're basically like scouting. Um, There's principals, administration from other schools um, coming. It, it was a winter festival and they're scouting, talking to us students, you know, kind of lining up jobs for the future, hopefully. So it, it's all within reach. Alexis? Um, so like I said, I started as like a wanting to be a teacher and then switching to, um, human services, psychology. Um, and I actually just recently accepted a position as a prayer professional in the CR district. Um, so I'm going to be starting full-time there. And I really want to use that as kind of experience, whether I choose to do clinical psychology or, um, school psychologist, kind of, you know, seeing it from all the perspectives by the time I finally, you know, um, get my degrees and all that, you know, a lot of college and stuff going forward, but having a good, you know, setup for that and working towards, you know, your dream job. Thank you. And Riley? So um, when I looked at uh, my degrees and going into college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So for those who still have no idea, yeah, there's undecided. But uh, in high school, we took the aptitude tests a bunch, and uh, those really helped me out to figure out what I wanted to be. And uh, mine always came out engineering. And now that I'm in engineering, I'm glad I listened to those aptitude tests. But um, after I graduate uh, this upcoming semester in the spring, uh, I'll be going up to UD to finish out my bachelor's in civil engineering, and then hopefully uh, getting my PE or my professional uh, licensure to be an engineer and uh, working locally. So that's, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and take some of the questions from the chat. Kate, can you help us with those? Yes, so we do have um, several questions. I just wanna make sure we go through all of them. Um, where are the nursing program? which uh, campus is that located? So Kristen did mention that our website does show every program of study as well as which um, campus or campuses it's offered at. But for nursing, it is offered at the Georgetown, Dover and Stanton campuses. Um, a couple of these, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just ask and answer. Uh, your Dell Tech application, um, the question was, when can you apply for the SEED scholarship? And your Dell Tech application is actually going to count as your SEED scholarship application as well. As long as you apply um, and put your correct high school graduation year, that will flag you for the SEED scholarship. So we do have um, the fall 2022 application open right now. So you can go ahead and apply for next fall if you're a senior. And um, usually every fall around this time of year is when that fall application for the following year will open. Um, I can put the, the contact back up um, for all of us. I will have that um, in just a moment. 
And then um, the next question was, can a student choose to attend some classes virtually? And I wanted to see if any of our uh, student panelists wanted to answer that one. Alexis, you're doing some virtual classes, aren't you? Yeah, actually, since I started in the summer, I've been doing all online just because it like that it works better with my schedule and my learning versus, you know, being in class and having to have your camera on and everything like that. It's just my anxiety and stuff helps with that. So it's definitely about, you know, finding what you like to do. So doing it all the way online um, is definitely better, except for, you know, classes that you may need more help with. Any other other students have a preference for classes, whether it be online or face to face Zoom? I, like I love the online classes. classes. Yeah, I do like all my classes. I like the virtual classes, but I really love the in-person classes because you get to make that connection, especially with elementary education. It's kind of hard to like pretend to do those lessons and stuff over Zoom because you can't really see how everyone's reacting to it. So it's really nice to do it face to face. Did you have something to add, Andrew? Yeah, so I was going to add, um, I am personally like in person more um with, with the online i for a lot of students or a lot of people like me um it really brings out like your true colors if you're like self-disciplined or not um I'm, I'm fine with like the work online but i just prefer like i like the routine of waking up driving to school you know and then stepping foot into a classroom so that was just my preference on it Great, thank you. Um, right now we do have both available. Our in-person are still at a limited basis due to the pandemic. They are more a, of a hybrid where you may only come onto campus once or twice a week. Um, but hopefully by the time this group of students get started next fall, we will be back to a more normal setting. Okay, um, next question is, can you talk about trade programs for skilled workers? Um, so our students here tonight are all in our degree program. Um, as far as the certification programs, these are short, short term certification programs that are going to be um, built and grouped as class or classes all at once. Um, they usually run several weeks to several months in a semester format. And um, they are meant to certify you for a specific trade industry. Um, to get you right into the workforce. Um, you, might, you might be entering the workforce brand new, or you may be continuing with certifications in your current job and career field to um, you know, increase your, your skills. Now, those are part of our workforce um, development and community education programs. They are all listed in our catalog as well as online. And um, the one thing to keep in mind is that those are not part of financial aid funded programs. So you would have to either pay out of pocket or we do have some programs that are actually um, offering assistance through. So um, Kristen, did I miss anything? Do you wanna add anything else? No, I think that was a good summary. And since okay. we vary by campus, the website's always the best point of information. Right, we do have different um, centers too that may, might not be located on our actual campuses. So um, the website is a great place to start, figure out what it is you wanna get certified in. And then um, you can always contact us with, with specific questions as well. And we can put you in connection with that department. Um, what is dual enrollment? So I think all, all the students we have on the call participated in dual enrollment. So. Tell us about that. Tell us about yeah. what high school you went, what classes you took. I participated in dual enrollment at Milford High School um, in Milford. And um, it's kind of where you take college classes while you're still in high school. So it helps you get ahead because when I came into college, I had my whole first semester done because I did a bunch of dual enrollment. Um, so you basically would take a class at your high school, but you would be doing college level work. And you would also be doing the work through the Delaware Tech, um, the program on the website. Um, and it's really nice because you also have, you have your teacher who is at your high school, and then you also have someone from Delaware Tech who can help you if you need that. Lily definitely um, summarized it, um, and it definitely helps to get ahead, you know, um, so it's less while you're actually enrolled, um, so that definitely helped. 
and then I was just gonna add um it was nice I did at Indian River High School um I went in into college not having to do with any writing or English class because I had them done out of the way and then it was also a different curriculum so instead of just going through like whatever district you're in in that that school um it was giving me a little taste of a different curriculum and then how they have things established so you kind of like learn the um vocabulary for that college you know and you kind of get a different experience wonderful so if you have any interest in taking our dual enrollment courses we recommend that you contact your school counselor to find out more um, every school has a dual enrollment contact usually it's the school counselors and um, they would be able to give you the specifics on what courses, if there's any fees, um, and how they the, the courses run at that particular school. I know before I came in also, I um, worked with Kristen about um, taking other college um, classes because after the um, first semester, if you hadn't um, already registered for dual enrollment, you know, you basically missed the opportunity to take that. So I worked with her on the side to get into um, other college classes to come in with even more um, college credit. Yes, great point. So if your school doesn't offer the course that you're interested in taking with us, or you wanna take additional courses, um, or for any reason, we don't have dual enrollment. We do have a lot of dual enrollment partnerships though, so we should have one. Um, you could take courses as a visiting high school student. And the difference is just that you would pay out of pocket at the same tuition um, as a Delaware in-state resident would, tuition and fees. Great, okay, so next question. Um, if a student has an IEP at high school level, will, will there be an opportunity to have an IEP at Dell Tech? So yes, um, we, um, students fall at a under a different federal law, but we do have disability support services available for our students. All you need to do is have a copy of that IEP. You would meet with our um, dis disability support counselor and um, you would work with him or her to create that accommodation plan. There's two big differences. One is that the student must advocate for himself or herself um, to, to want that accommodation plan. So we can't call the meeting, we can't offer that plan to you. You are treated as an adult and you need to advocate for yourself. The second piece is that um, this accommodation plan would be renewed every semester. So once you get registered for your classes, you would then schedule that meeting with the disability support counselor to create or update that accommodation plan. Okay, uh, next question. Can you do work study as an incoming freshman? Did you say April 1st was the date to apply for Delaware Tech? Um, you can do uh, work study when you um, complete the FAFSA, you can check that as an option. Um, we do have limited work study options right now only because of the pandemic, but we do still have those available. Um, again, hopefully that will be, um, things will be more back to normal next fall. And April 1st is the priority deadline for the FAFSA to be submitted. So it opens October 1st and you can start completing that FAFSA, you know, in a few days. I recommend you do it earlier than later, but April 1st is the priority deadline. Um, quickly mention, in addition to work study opportunities, as Alexis mentioned, we do have jobs on campus as well. So Alexis works in our child development center. Um, I don't know, Andrew, Lily, Riley, do any do any of you have jobs on campus? No, I don't. Mine's off campus. Okay. okay. Yeah, I do not either. I thought you mentioned that yours were off campus. Thank you. Uh, next question. How much is in-state tuition? Um, that's going to vary depending on what classes you take um, and how many, but our in-state tuition um, is currently 152.50 per credit hour. And then there are fees. Um, there is a flat rate when you get to 15 credits or more. It is a flat rate of 22.87.50 per semester. Um, does a student have to start in the fall or can they choose to start in the winter? This is a great question. Um, we actually don't have a winter semester. We have a spring semester that starts in January in the winter. 
Um, and that depends on if you are planning to use the seed scholarship or not. So for seed, uh, you must start in the fall. So you cannot take any type of gap year or gap semester. So you would wanna plan to start in the fall. Um, let's see. Do you have a radio radiography program? If true, where is that located? We do have a radiologic technology program um, that is located in Wilmington. And Georgetown. And Georgetown. And um, that is one of our competitive admissions program. So there are more details on our website for the program. You can take a closer look. Um, most of our students will have um, maybe an extra semester or two depending because you do have to have certain requirements in order to apply to that specific program. Uh, let's see, there are some degree programs like automotive that are AAS, can this qualify for the seed program? Um, yes, so all of our degree programs would um, qualify to use the seed scholarship. We also have several certificate programs that are um, listed on the degree program listing and those would also qualify for the seed scholarship. What would not qualify would be those uh, training certifications that we talked about a few minutes ago. Jumping back related to the seed scholarship that we were just talking about, there's a question about the credit minimum. As it stands right this second, students do have to be enrolled in 12 credits for the fall semester to be eligible for seed. Then after that, it goes to 24 credits within the year. Now there is um, pending legislation for seed plus that could come out any day now and change that. So stay tuned. But as it stands right this second, it is 12 credits for the fall. If a student does have an IEP, um, sometimes we can work with our disability support counselors and recommend a reduced course load, but traditionally it is 12 credits. Um, thank you, Kristen. And then uh, can you get help for completing the FAFSA? Yes, so we have um, financial aid officers that can definitely help you answer any questions um, while we can, talk about the general aspects of FAFSA, the financial aid office, once you've submitted the FAFSA, can tell you everything about your financial record. But if you need help getting started, you can make an appointment with them or you can actually schedule an appointment with uh, Stand By Me. And they, um, they will go through the entire FAFSA with you from start to finish. And I recommend if you feel uncomfortable or you aren't sure, have never done the FAFSA, I really recommend you make that appointment because they're fantastic to work with. And then you know you've done it all right. There will be less documentation needed later because you know you did the FAFSA correct. And I believe that most of the high schools also have FAFSA nights. So um, take advantage of the ones that the schools are offering where you can go and get additional information. We also have um, you know, a FAFSA 2022, 2023, worksheet that we like to share out that's very helpful as well. Well, this is another great one for the students, especially the students on this call, because you've already told us how, how you balance everything. But the question is, how flexible is course scheduling if a student works? Anybody want to take that one? So I was going to say it's actually like very flexible. Um, when I talked to my academic advisor, uh, he knew like the beginning of the fall semester is like kind of challenging to start classes because I'm still working like 80 plus 90 hours a week. Um, so depending on if you know if you have like something that's going to fall in that uh, semester, you can take uh, like a shortened class um, where they cram more information in, in a given amount of time. So I had a lot of classes start two to three weeks later than the um, start of the semester, as well as there's various times that you can, if you're doing in person, um, that you can show up if it's either you can't do it Mondays or Thursdays, or maybe you can only go on a Friday. Um, I know the option of taking a Saturday class, Saturday morning. Um, so it is very flexible. What about the other students? Anything to add? to the scheduling and, and the flexibility. 
I think Andrew said everything really, um, but it's really just about learning to plan because um, there's a, if you go in in the beginning of, or planning for the semester, if you go in earlier, there's a lot of different class schedules and everything. And then once you get to the end, it definitely closes the gaps a little bit. Um, but if you go in the beginning of it, it's easier to find classes that work for your schedule. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree, agree with what you said. Um, definitely looking earlier rather than later is better because you have more of a choice there. Kind of related to that question, there's another question about, are there any work on your own schedule type classes? Anybody want to take that one? That's actually all that I've taken since I started in the summer. Um, and then now, just because it works better for my schedule. So you, you uh, it's not really at your own pace, except for in the summer. Um, it has like due dates and stuff per the class and everything. If you look at the outline that you receive after you um, start the class, you can look at the outline and kind of do that as you want to versus, you know, reporting to Zoom classes or, or um, coming to class on the campus, so. Thank you. Um, do you have a photography graphic arts program? If so, what location? We do have um, three visual communications programs. One of them is a photo imaging one. All of those are located out of our Dover campus. Uh, the different, what is the difference between the certificate program and the degrees? Um, cert I think you're talking about the certificate programs I mentioned that fall within the degree department. Um, it, it really kind of just is a matter of, are you expanding your current career skills and um, you know, getting just a certificate or are you getting the associate degree? Um, sometimes those certificate programs actually require another degree in a related field but I know the baking and pastry certificate out of the Stanton campus, that's a common one that students will use the seed scholarship and go into. So it really kind of depends on the program. Let's see. And then related to the question about counselors and how many a student would have based on whether or not they have an accommodation. Um, every, every student is a, assigned a program advisor within their major. So that is somebody who the student will work very closely with. Uh, many of the students on the call today mentioned their program advisors really are their go-to people. And that is definitely the case. Those are uh, people that are in, employed in the field that the student's studying and are going to be probably the closest point of contact for the students. But we do have in our advisement counselor, like Kate and I are academic counselors. So we all have an answer area too. So like I work very closely with Alexis for dual enrollment and visiting high school, because that's my role. We have um, disability support counselors at every campus location who uh, work with students that have accommodations. We have veteran support counselors for students that might be using military benefits. So yes, if you want to think of it like that, um, sometimes students do have more than one counselor. And when students do initial advising, they can see any counselor in the um, virtual support center or in the advising office. So the academic counselors kind of get all students started. We identify those needs such as, you know, disability support services, um, accommodations, military benefits, and we make those connections for the students. Um, and then after that, the student will still stay in touch with their program advisor, but also their specialty uh, counselor if they need to. Um, so we have a question about the 12 credits and what that means. Um, really, it, it depends on your financial aid and what your goals are. So if you are getting the seed scholarship, then yes, you do have to have 12 credits, not classes. And classes vary from anywhere from one to eight credits, depending on, on the major. Um, but it would be 12 credit hours for your first semester and 24 for your total first year. So typically a first semester full-time 12 credit load is about three to five classes, depending on which classes you're taking. Did any of the students wanna to add to that about the credits and the class load actually? 
how you work your schedules with that? Yeah, so I was going to add, um, so like when I first went in um, to Dell Tech, uh, majority of my classes were four credit hour classes. So I only ended up having to take three to four um, for that first semester to con be considered full time um, and get um, financial aid and all that. So it wasn't terribly hard. Um, I think like typically your first semester in college, you're not taking all just four credit classes. So you will be taking that four to five range um, class, which is very manageable. You just have to, you know, plan yourself and set yourself up ahead for success, not to not prepare and then fail. So. Yeah, I definitely agree with what you said about that. Just making sure that you're looking at what is due when. And a lot of times your teachers will have stuff due like on the same days of the week. So just making sure you know that like, hey, you have this due on a Sunday and you have this usually due on a Monday is nice to know just to keep in the back of your head when you're going about your day to know what you might have due that night. Yeah, like Lily said, that's basically how I plan out my schedule to say, you know, what's the most important this day because it's due three days from now or, you know, whenever it's due. Um, definitely laying out your schedule like that. Great, thank you guys. Um, do you have a welding related trade program? We do, and that would be available on our website. Um, the more information, it would be part of our workforce development and community education programs, not a degree program. Um, where would early childhood be located? We have that at three of our campuses. So Georgetown, Dover, and Wilmington all offer the early childhood education program. And the best part of that program is definitely being able, so for some of your classes, you'll have like the lab hours counted as going into the child development centers that are right on the campus, um, which is really amazing because you can do the work study and different um, opportunity for, like I said, your lab hours and different um, things that you can do. And actually, if you're taking, you don't even have to be taking the um, early childhood degree, but you can um, apply online to work in the child development center too, if that's what you're looking for. Thank you, Alexis. Okay. So if you have any last minute questions, feel free to put them in the chat. We can go ahead and share our contact information for the counselors again, in case you think of any questions after the Zoom ends today. I have a question. Sure. Um, you guys have an awesome virtual assistant feature. Um, I don't think I heard you talk about that unless I missed it, but I was trying to pay attention. Um, can you talk about that? Because that was, you know, I tested it out and I was just shocked at how quick and, and and how helpful it was. Absolutely, you're right. I only mentioned it in a little blurb in the first five minutes. Um, when it comes time to meeting with a counselor to schedule your classes, again, that typically happens in April if you're planning to join us in August or as early as April, I should say. You have the option to go into any campus advisement center or you can connect with our virtual support center. So our virtual support center is basically just like a virtual campus. So we have our counselors uh, on a Zoom. We have the business office, financial aid. It's kind of a one-stop Zoom link to all of our support services on campus. And the hours for the virtual center are posted on our website. So it's a great way if you don't wanna make a trip to campus, uh, you can just click on the Zoom link, let the host know which department you wanna to talk to, and then they'll connect you with a representative from that department. And, but it can be, even if people have questions, it's not just even if you, you know, it can be any question about coming to Delaware Tech. Yeah, it absolutely could be. It, um, admissions questions, financial aid questions, um, and certainly for initial advisement too. Thank you, Karen. And one thing I wanted to follow up on um, when we were talking about the help for FAFSA completion, um, there are resources at Delaware Tech, Stand By Me is there to help you. And also um, from the Department of Education, we have um, our DelawareStudentSuccess.org website. And on the homepage of the website is a calendar of events. And listed there are lots of sessions from Stand By Me. They do um, intro to financial aid. They do how to apply for scholarships. And they and you can sign up right there also to have one-on-one -on -one FAFSA completion help. So it's the same organization, but um, the information can be found on our calendar as well at DelawareStudentSuccess.org. 
Um, and those are statewide, the, the, the info sessions, um, some of them they do statewide, so anybody could join. They do two or three a week, some are around noon, some are at like 6 p.m. in the evening. They try to accommodate different schedules. They have them in Spanish, if that's helpful for you. Um, and then schools can also ask them to do specific presentations, you know, for certain for high schools if the school counselors have requested that. So lots of ways to get help. Please take advantage of that. Don't be afraid of, um, you know, completing the FAFSA because that's how you get free money from the federal government for college, depending on your income. So um, that's an opportunity that you definitely should take advantage of. To the, the FAFSA opens on Friday, this Friday, October first. So you know. Wherever you're choosing to apply, the earlier you get your FAFSA in, the earlier you will hear back about financial aid. And there's, you know, pots of money um, that some are first come, first serve at some schools. Others, you know, are not. So just take advantage of that and take advantage of the supports that are here in our state for you. Yes, you should wait until the senior year for filling out the FAFSA, October 1st. Anytime after that, then you can complete the FAFSA. And just a reminder, anyone interested in getting the SEED scholarship will also need to do a FAFSA as well. Well, that's a really good question. Is the SEED scholarship income-based? And the answer to that is no, it is not. However, one of the qualifiers to getting the SEED scholarship is to complete the FAFSA. And sometimes federal funding ends up being um, even more beneficial to a student than the state funding. For example, if a student's eligible for a Pell Grant, that can sometimes cover books and fees. So if you are a student that has high needs, sometimes that federal funding actually works to your advantage. But even if you're a multimillionaire, you can still qualify for SEED as long as you've done the FAFSA and you have those um, other requirements met, the GPA and the um, no gap year, no felonies, all those good ones. You don't have to be accepted into schools before completing the FAFSA. Um, and you can put on your FAFSA up to 10 schools. Yeah, it's 10, um, where you're thinking about applying. And that way, the schools will receive your information. The financial aid offices will receive your information. So even if you're not sure if Delaware Tech is an option for you, you should list it on the FAFSA if, if it's a possibility. That way, if you decide to come to Delaware Tech and it's even later, at least we'll have your FAFSA. So we're just about out of time. Um, do you recommend doing the FAFSA before applying to schools? Well, you should do the FAFSA as soon as possible after October 1st, that would be my recommendation. So you're gonna be applying for colleges, you know, anytime October, November, usually maybe December. But if you can get your stuff in early, that's always the better option. And there's our website on the, on the screen, DelawareStudentSuccess.org, and that's where the calendar of events is on the homepage. And you'll see all the Stand By Me. And we just, are, we just got the October events, so they may not be up today, but they will be up in the next couple of days, um, everything that's happening for October. So I wanna take this opportunity to thank um, uh, Kristen and Kate um, from Delaware Tech, and of course our students, you guys were fantastic. Um, Lily, Andrew, Alexis, and Riley, um, really appreciate your insights and input. It's so helpful for other, for high school students to hear your experiences and hear, you know, what your daily life is and what you've, what you advise to them and, and everything that you shared. So thank you all for making the time for this. And again, the recording of this will be posted on DelawareStudentSuccess.org in a couple of days if there's anything you want to go back and see and feel free to reach out to the Delaware Tech team for anything that you need help with. They're super helpful um, and are, are really there to help students succeed in whatever their next steps are. So thank you everyone. Have a good evening.